for English class. It's time for English class. What time is it? It's time for English class. What time is it? It's time to play the panda drum. I like the panda drum. Do you like it when teacher plays the panda drum? Do you like teacher to play the panda drum? Teacher will play some more later. I hope you found listening to the panda drum to be enjoyable. Enjoyable. I hope you liked it. What is today's lesson? Today's lesson is what time is it? It is time for English class. What time is it? I have to catch a bus. I might need my watch. This is a watch. This is teacher's watch. What is this? This is a digital clock. Digital clock. Because it is, well, <laughs> is how we tell time with a digital clock. This is an analog clock. We use it during class. Yes. Wonderful, thank you, Yvonne. Thanks so much for the comment. Teacher appreciates it. So we have, today's lesson is about time. So we have different ways of telling time. Digital clock, analog clock, and a watch that we can walk, put on our... Oh, I will tell you in just a moment. I, I will show you. Okay, I was going to say we also use our phones. This is a panda drum. Let me play some music. It is very relaxing. We have time to listen to the panda drum. Listen to this. Can you hear it or do I need to turn up the sound? Let me turn up the sound. Let's see. Teacher, there. A little more sound makes it easier. Okay, here we go.
playing the panda drum. It's very relaxing. It gives teacher enjoyment. And I'm glad you think it's mysterious. It is brain tingling. I'm glad. Wow. Well, we have time. We can play some more. I have college students and I tell them one time a week to clear your thoughts and think about something else. Today is Saturday. So you can relax. I might make a video just of the panda drums so we can all relax and we can enjoy our day. Oh yes, panda drum. I even, wait just a moment, I can show you. It is a panda drum. Um, that is how I looked for it when Okay. Oh, I, you know, I had not even thought of that. We could put it um, as part of our class to relax and clear our thoughts. That's wonderful. I like that idea. I can hit every note. I have to be careful if the wood hits over here and makes a sour note. <laughs> okay, let's listen. that I even chatted with yesterday. And it was so amazing that I have kept in touch with my students. And I have students who were with me in college who are members of this class. They are subscribers on YouTube. A certain shout out to my students who are in Japan right now. Hello. <laughs> I saw the cherry blossoms you posted on WeChat. They're amazing. The cherry blossoms in Japan are in bloom. Teacher doesn't know how to sing. <laughs> coolest vacation I could ever think of would be time travel. If you could time travel, what year would you want to go to? For me, it's 2047, but I have a reason for that. Or maybe 2043. Ah, I have lots of favorite songs, gosh. <coughs> They have a song called um, Rhythm of the Rain. It's from a group called the Cascades, but it was like long ago, very long ago. That's one of my favorites. I like all kinds of music. Uh, Queen, Killer Queen, uh, Guns N' Roses. Uh, I like Paradise City, like a wide, ELO, uh, Electric Light Orchestra. I think I can. It's possible. If I could go into the future, I would want to see what, right now we're beginning with quantum computing, artificial intelligence. We're doing a lot of amazing things now. And I would like to see a time when we're able to have the ability to 
produce fresh water from the atmosphere that's uncontaminated with chemicals. Um, be able to grow food organically. Um, indoors is a problem because you have to produce electricity, but if you have solar wind panels and fish farms, if you have tidal wave power, and if you do it, and here's something that people don't think about. If you can benefit the economy, pull people out of poverty, give them jobs, and even something like recycling plastic and um, building walls with it, because they don't have to be load-bearing, and use it like 25% of the ingredients you may use to make the cement. You guys are getting into my advanced class. I haven't started my advanced class, but eh, well, let's talk about it. We're talking about time today. There are lots of different things. Um, if you provide people their essentials, a safe place to live, pull them out of poverty, help them get better jobs, help provide for their families, help benefit their communities, you would eliminate a lot of the tension that creates problems. So I don't know. Uh, let me tell you a story about a student. Um, let's see. Good story about a student. We have a student. Uh, what can be the name of the student? Uh, his name is Eduardo. Eduardo lives in Mexico and he grows cactus because there are certain kinds of cactus that you can grow for food. I don't know. Well, let's find, we'll, 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 I don't know if you can run into your past self or what would happen. They've shown that on movies and I'm not sure what would happen. But let's say Eduardo uh, is growing cactus. Cactus that he grows has water in it. So there's fresh water. The cactus can be used for food. They put it in salads and the waste products, they grind it up and they turn it into biofuel. So you can use it to produce energy. Yeah, it would. It, that's that's the rumor. I read something the other day that said traveling to the past may not be possible, but they didn't say traveling to the future wasn't. You know, I'm not sure, and that's what. That's one of the things that they're talking about. I read the article that said from the past might be dope. Personally, as much as I would love it, I think it's, uh, I'm not sure if it would be possible. We would have to ask one of the time travelers and ask them what they think <laughs> if it's possible. Um, What I thought would be possible, what would be fun, is if an anthropology class, say even a hundred years from now, could get a hold of video feed, but that they can always do because it's all, all recorded. They couldn't, they would just simply use a recording, so they would have no reason to do that. Yeah, that's that's what I've been told. It's it's not possible to go back. I saw a movie once that once it was gone, it was like it evaporated. It ceased to exist. I teach English mostly, but I have um, I'm learning how to teach on YouTube. I teach English, and I want to teach specific purpose English. This is my basic English class. I have 90 videos that are posted on YouTube. And this is fun. Um, I started a new career three months ago. And it's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. 
so it's English. But what I want to do, um, this is my basic channel. I have an advanced channel that uh, is on YouTube. I haven't started it yet. Yeah, we could. That's a very good thought. Or even just certain times of the day. Um, on Saturday morning, I try to have a live broadcast at this time of the day. In five hours, right now it's 5 a.m. where I'm at. I'm here in Colorado in the USA. It's five, oh, now it's, uh, I'm sorry. 5.43 a.m. Let's look at the clock. Can you see that? 5.43 a.m. That's the current time here locally. And I try, although I'm not good at technology, I try to have it every Saturday morning. Well, thank you. So that's what we can do today. That gives us an incentive it gives us purpose. And that's what the class gives me, purpose. Having a purpose in your life will make you happier. It will make you have more enjoyment. Ah, in Chicago. Wow. Okay. And where are you that it's 5.45 p.m.? Bangladesh. Awesome. I have many subscribers from Bangladesh. Did you know that Bangladesh is one of the three countries I have the most uh, subscribers and views? Uh, and I love it. I, I, I'm just enjoying. I'm having a great time. I'm glad you're enjoying it. So we can just sit and talk and have a relaxing conversation, listen to music. Some of these notes are better than others. You know, I looked into it. Uh, if I want to go to Bangladesh, I need a visa, which can be done. I got a visa to go to China. No, this is all. This is the limit of what teacher can do musically. This is the, the very limit. I love it because it's so easy to play and you make unique because you just try different tones. And it's so relaxing. This is the only one. Thank you. And I just got this like a week or two ago, very recently. I placed an order on Amazon and they mailed it directly to my front porch. I went out there and picked it up and I've been playing it. favor, will you tell your friends to uh, watch and share the videos and subscribe? I always need more subscribers. One of my, it's not time travel, but it's actual travel. It's literally, I can travel anywhere in the world. I recently went to the country of the Bahamas and I ate conch. It's spelled C-O-N-C-H, conch. And that is the national, and I ate conch fritters. I posted a video about Anthony's seafood and ribs, but I need to put the uh, photographs of me eating it. And the people were so happy when they saw me eating it. And there was another American 
because I ate it twice while I was over there. I have one time for lunch and one time for dinner as it's like an appetizer. You have it with your meal. And the gentleman next table over asked about it. So I had several, so I gave him one. He really liked it. He owns a restaurant here in America, in New York. And he was really happy that he, he got to try one. And they're actually quite tasty. Um, it's a sea creature. It's kind of like an oyster, for lack of a... And I had it in the fritter, which was deep fried with vegetables. It was so delicious. And the thing is, by doing that, what we were able to do is have it cooked. I, I, I didn't want to eat it raw. Some people eat it raw. I wanted it cooked. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, um, it was better. And the flavor was amazing. It was really good. Uh, I also have a video where I taught English with sharks. I'm not kidding. You can see the shark. It went right over teacher. I'm like this, filming the shark swimming directly over me during class. I had two videos, uh, shorts, short videos about the sharks. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. Anyway, I am an actual teacher. Uh, I teach level one to level six. Um, I have adult students I teach at a school. I'm a volunteer at the school and the students, we have upper and lower. Um, upper is levels four and five, lower is levels two and three, and then we kind of use level one as a separate because that's very, very basic. Hi. I am Teacher Dale. Who are you? What is your name? It is good to meet you. How are you? That is level one. Very basic, very simple. And I have level one students who will watch this once it's replayed. Yes, I will post this on the channel after we're done uh, with class today. So, I teach at an actual school. Yes, I do. I am, and I, uh, I'm a Christian. My channel manager is a Muslim. He is celebrating Ramadan, and I am helping him by taking and doing tasks that he will normally do because I told him I want him to enjoy his faith and be honest to his faith. And he is, he's very, he's a very honorable person. My channel manager who helps me run this channel is very honorable. And when people come to me and they want me to work with them, digital marketers, oh, I can do this, I can do that. I say, well, that's nice. I will think about it, but I have a channel manager and he's from Bangladesh. Yes, yes, and this is what we can do Saturday. We can do this each Saturday. Sometimes I have trouble getting YouTube to work live, but today it works and I was still late because I got up late. I admit teacher was late. <laughs> I should have allowed more time before I got started today. But it's wonderful. We're in class. No, my faith is Jesus. And I understand that there's one God. We all worship one God, the same God. And But in deference to my friends who are Hindu, I have studied, and as a teacher, uh, I want to honor their religion because they have a different faith, and that's perfectly acceptable. I have friends who are Buddhist, 
and they uh, practice the theory of Buddhism. So it's fine. We, we all are respectful of one another. Well, thank you. I appreciate hearing that. I'm an ordinary, humble person. I try to promote my students and their accomplishments and what they're learning. Um, when I lived in China, I had a very small uh, apartment and I loved my apartment. I was on the ninth floor of the building and uh, I had a small kitchen. It was like a, what we call in America a studio, uh, an efficiency apartment. The bedroom, living room, kitchen is all one room and then you have a private bathroom. And I had a window I could see out of my window being on the ninth floor. And it was only a 20 minute walk to my classroom at the university where I was teaching. Is it very crowded in China? Not as crowded as I thought it would be. Uh, I was in a small town. I was in Xi'an, China, and it, there were 12 million people. So it was a fairly small town. <laughs> but I did get to go to the rural areas on twice. I got to visit this village that is near Xi'an, and I got to spend uh, a weekend in the village and I got to see, it was amazing. It was just so wonderful. Uh, the people were great, the history, the culture. It was amazing, very amazing. And if I get the chance, probably gonna be next year before I can get back to Asia, I do wanna visit India. I do wanna visit Bangladesh. I have not been to either country. And I think it would be an amazing experience. Um, when I was in Mexico, what was it, a year ago? Maybe, well, now it just started, I was maybe two years ago now when I was in Mexico. I wanted one of the colleges, but it was too soon after COVID. And I can understand. I asked them if I could just come and speak at their college. Uh, and the thing is, um, it was too soon after COVID, they couldn't allow it. On Tuesday, I'm going to, oh yes, I have not been there either. And yes, I want to go. Yes, I, I saw the original Star Wars movie when it first came out long ago in a far, far away place in another galaxy. Yes, I did see Star Wars. Yes, Japan, definitely. As a matter of fact, I've been looking I'll probably go to Japan first, and I have students there, and go to Japan first because um, it's easy with the airplane. You leave either Los Angeles or San Francisco, and you go straight into Tokyo. Uh, what I'm looking at is they have two airports, Narita and Haneda. Haneda, Haneda? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that one right. I think it's Haneda. And you go there, it, it would be, and right now, cherry blossoms. This time of the year, my, I have students there, I told you, and my students sent me photographs of the cherry blossoms. They're amazing. Canada and Mexico, and I would love to go to Central and South America. That would be another thing that teacher would love. And I just got back from the Bahamas. Um, 
I would like to go. I love travel. That's one of the things teacher really loves. Travel, meet new people, and if possible, uh, be able to talk. I did a presentation to a group of people uh, when I was in China. I, we were, as part of our teaching duties, we had to take an evening and put on a presentation for students from all over campus and the community. Anyone was welcome to attend. Um, a couple hundred people were there, and that would be so amazing. And from an aspect of YouTube, if I can go places and meet people, it gives me more of a chance to let people learn about the channel. What are we trying to accomplish? What I am trying to accomplish this year, I have already met the first goal, 100 subscribers, and almost now 12,000 views. The goal was 10,000. So I've hit the first, like a ladder. We've hit the first step on the ladder. Now we gotta go to the next step, which is a thousand viewers. It's sad on YouTube, it takes longer to go from zero to 100 than it does from 100 to 1,000. And if science majors out there about physics, once an item is in motion, it will continue in motion. And I call it snowball. It will get, the channel will get bigger as I have more videos posting every two days, more videos, a bigger library, and better, higher quality videos. And get to that 1,000, that's so important, and 4,000 hours of viewing time. So that's the next rung on the ladder. Ladder, L-A-D-D-E-R, ladder. You climb a ladder. And we're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Now, I know this can be done. It can be done. We have the willingness to do it, to get it done. Because there are millions. If I were to tell you China alone, and what you said, China, let us, let us teach on YouTube. It will help the people so much. Please allow us to teach the classes on YouTube. It is estimated there are up to 800 million people in China who are interested in learning English. I do not know how many people in India, Bangladesh, Japan, but I'm guessing there are millions of people in Asia who would like to learn English or at least improve their English. Many people speak English. I lived in the Philippines for a short time and I lived in a village and I learned that a lot of people speak English, but they could improve their English. And if you're thinking about getting a job in a tourist area, I have students in Mexico who live in Cancun and that's a huge tourist area. And they're able to benefit and help improve their job because they can practice their English in class. I also have students in Africa. I am in, uh, in touch with a ministry that has live broadcasts on Facebook. They have their services on Facebook, J Angel Ministries, and there's a church in Gaborone, Botswana, that also, Life Spirit Giving Church, and they also have uh, Facebook. And I've been meeting people on Facebook. I don't normally do the talking on Facebook. I let others do it. But I have been meeting people recently on Facebook from all over the world, Pakistan, uh, different parts of Africa, from Europe, 
uh, different parts in America. Yeah, like Chicago. <laughs> Go Cubs, right? Yeah, Cubs or White Sox, which one do you like? I, when I was in Chicago, I went to both Wrigley Field and Old Comiskey Park. I was driving down the Dan Ryan Expressway on a Sunday morning, uh, just driving through Chicago, and I was listening to WLS, and the guy on the radio said, hey, they're having a game at Comiskey. Why don't you, if you're not doing nothing, stop and watch the game. So I said, what the heck? It's Sunday, I got time. So I went to a game, and while I was waiting there, I got a really uh, wonderful seat, um, and I watched the baseball game, and it was a lot of fun. It was very relaxing. So I imagine a lot of you like uh, football or what we call soccer. My biggest conspiracy theory. Huh. Well, that would be somewhere between aliens and time travel. Well, and, and here's what I'm thinking. They were just saying the other day, there might be trillions of suns in the galaxies or in the universe or whatever. I guess there are many galaxies all together is called the universe. Is it possible with 600 trillion suns and maybe a billion trillion planets we're the only one that can sustain life? I don't know. I don't think so. They haven't found any proof, but I, I think the, the isn't that does it exist. I think the, the big thing is, is it doesn't exist. We're the only ones out of hundreds of trillions of stars that have planets around every one of them and those planets have moons and we're the only one anywhere that can sustain life? That to me, that would be the, the shock. That would be the hard, that would be the part that would be hard for me to understand or believe. So what do you think? Are we the only ones in the universe? Or are there other planets and other places? Do we have brothers and sisters out there we've never met? What kind of life would be out there? And is that life capable of space travel? That would probably be a good question. Maybe we are the aliens a billion years from now traveling to other places. And they're the ones who are going to be afraid of us because we're the aliens. What do you think? We definitely want to share some beautiful music with them.
Yeah, next Saturday I'm hoping to get started on time. you have live this will be I think I'll be under live it might be under live when I post it as a video been up what you work a shift worker you work at night or you just been up all night no you don't have to apologize you don't have to say you're sorry i i was just happy that you got a quick nap out of it Just trying to see. Uh, you're in Chicago, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I I have been to Chicago. I know all about Michigan Avenue when the wind is blowing off the lake in January. Been there, done that. Oh, okay. <coughs> Oh, that's good. Okay. Well, then, that's wonderful. You have a good purpose there. Well, I'm so happy that you stayed with the, the lesson today. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a parka on. And I may as well have just had a t-shirt. It was so cold. When the wind blows off the lake, it is unbelievable. So which do you prefer, Cubs or White Sox? <coughs> Wait, just a minute. I got to get a cough drop. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. You like the bulls. Mm, bad note. 
<laughs> have to be careful of the wood. <laughs> Ah, LeBron. <coughs> I'm originally from the Bay Area, but I did live in Los Angeles. Teachers lived a lot of places. Um, yeah, I get definitely LeBron is, is the probably the best basketball player right now anywhere. Um, I know, Golden State Warrior fans, I'm from the Bay Area. I'm supposed to say Curry, but I have to admit that LeBron one-on-one is probably a lot better. <clears throat> I'm here in Colorado, and Denver Nuggets won the championship last year. We have the Joker. He's pretty good too, but I don't... I'd still say LeBron is probably the best. Because if you go by several years, just year in and year out, other people have a great year. Curry had a great year. Uh, the Joker had an amazing year. But year in and year out, um, he's like Michael Jordan was when Michael Jordan was playing for the Bulls. Where in Colorado did you go? Most people come here to go skiing. Oh, wonderful. Okay, good. Yes, a lot of people, oh gosh, there's just endless jobs for any kind of construction, road work, uh, housing, um, big high rises. There's just like the whole state is just under construction. Oh, okay. Yep. I-25. Yeah. here but it's very expensive living here that's that's the hard part every millionaire in america has a second house in colorado it's it's crazy beautiful <clears throat> yes as long as you don't have to drive during a storm did you see the video I did I, I taught class during a blizzard and I posted it on uh, Facebook actually I have on Facebook on YouTube I have two videos uh, one when it was like so cold well they're both cold 
but one where it was snowing and the wind was blowing. I was outside and yes, I did get sick, I admit it. I didn't want people to worry, I didn't want my students, my channel manager and my students, and, and now I guess you're, you're a student too. All the students in the class say, teacher, don't do that again, don't get yourself sick. So yes, you are a student in the class now too. You're one of my YouTube students. I have face-to-face -face classroom students. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it was good that you got off the road. Because it's very dangerous driving during a blizzard. I don't like it. Unless it's an emergency, I won't do it. Um, but I have my face-to-face -face students. I taught face-to-face -face in China. I've taught face-to-face uh, -face in the school here. And then um, I have online students. I work through an online school. I also have private tutoring. But I'm trying, I'm trying now to do more YouTube and less uh, online teaching. I wanted, I'm, I'm encouraging my online students to come to YouTube so I can teach everybody at once. And that, that's so neat that we're able to do that. So I teach in person, I teach online, and I teach on YouTube. And YouTube is my biggest classroom. And I think it's cool because I am an actual teacher. I got my master's in teaching and then I got my Teaching English a Foreign Language, TEFL, TEFL certification. So I got my certification to teach English. And I want to do more than just teach the English. I want to be able to help people get jobs, start a business, start doing different things with it so that they can use their talents. And I want to start doing interviews with students. I have one coming up. We're going to film it on Tuesday, and I'm not sure how long it will take to get it posted, but we'll see what happens. The student is going to interview me and another um, college professor. He says, can I call you professor? So I said, that's fine. I don't care. I taught at the university, so I don't mind being called professor. And in Spanish, el profesor is teacher, so that's fine. That works. And I can. Right now, I have students in YouTube on six continents and over 20 countries. And I really want to expand. I want it to, to be able to do even more than what I'm doing. Yeah. And we find out we're not all that different. We thought we were, but we're not. We're, we're very much, all of us have a lot of things that we want to accomplish. My advanced channel, I want to get this channel up and running and get it to be able to sustain itself. Once it can be done, then I can move. I thank you for all the kindness. Um, what I can do, I can start to spend more time with my advanced channel and we're going to be able to do things on that channel that I don't really want to do here. I want to keep this channel basic. I want people with a basic understanding to come here and if they want to learn more, they want to learn what it is to be a student entrepreneur. They want to learn more about technology. They want to learn more about uh, outer space and time travel and all kinds of different things that we can talk about. Uh, environment. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Just because you want to help the environment or just because you like business, has anyone ever thought about combining the two? Let's use technology, artificial intelligence, even old technology from thousands of years ago. Find the technology, use the technology, oh, sorry, no, 
and use that technology to help pull these people out of poverty. People leave their villages because there's no hope. They have to leave the village. I lived in the village. I know what it is to fetch water. I asked my students in China, how many of you have had to fetch water? And they looked at me and then they got me back. They says, okay, what does 996 mean? <laughs> Fetching water in the village means you're grabbing your buckets, you're waiting in line at the community pump, and then you carry the buckets of water back to your house. That is fetching water. 996. My students got me for that. They said, okay, teacher, what does 996 mean? Gee, I don't know. Tell me what 996 means. 996 is when you work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. 996. Yeah, okay, great. You get some rest. I've got three minutes and I'll be on one hour and then I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, Yvonne, it has been amazing chatting with you. You're a great student. Uh, welcome to the class. And like I say, invite your friends. We'll, we'll try to make this a Saturday morning thing. I'll try to get it started on time next time so that we can get started at 5 a.m. and we'll be done at 6 a.m. I'm just going to end the class with some music, uh, get your rest, and... Uh, Hopefully you'll be here next Saturday. Hopefully I'll be too. Okay, so long. Have a class dismissed. I'm just going to end it with some music. Thank <laughs> you.